recording. I am recording the. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the live lecture on today, 14 of July 2020. We have now 26 students at the lecture. Now, let's get started. Now you see the cover page of the lecture that we have today. The lecture is Reinforced Concrete Theory, CIV 481. And this is the week three, lecture one. In this slide, you see the topics of the contents of the lecture that we discussed today. We see the flexural analysis of reinforced concrete beams. That we see the ultimate strength design, which is called the U ST method, or simply by the ACI, it is called a strength method, a strength design method. And we see some examples about how to analyze the uh, reinforced concrete beams under the bending moment or flexural effect. First, let's see the uh, concepts of this design. What are the basis of this design? You see that we see the nominal flexural moment or ultimate flexural moment. What is ultimate and what is design? You uh, will see we define that. In this section, a very brief introduction to the calculation of ultimate or nominal flexural strengths of beams is presented. This topic is continued at considerable length in the next chapter, where formulas, limitations, design, and other matters are presented. Therefore, let's uh, see uh, in next slide what is the stress profile that we consider one for one beam. Imagine that we have one beam and its section, as it's shown here, is a rectangular section with tension, uh, reinforced, uh, reinforcing steel bars. Imagine that we have one section, the effective depth is D, its width is D, and the area of the steel bars are AS. If you see the stress variation or stress profile in this section, we see that we have a nonlinear form in the compression zone and it continues in tension zone that we neglect that and we show that by dash line. This is the stress uh, profile. And you see that the maximum is at not at extreme fiber. At extreme fiber, it has less. 
because if you see the stress strain curve of the concrete, maximum is not at the end, it's at some uh, strain, something about 0 0.002. Okay, we have one meter access and its location has a distance from top, a distance that we call that C. Okay, how we can calculate the area of stress here? It's clear because it's nonlinear care. We should use integrate integration and integral to calculate this area. This is the course of uh, design. Is not the mathematic. How we solve that? In a sort of this compression a profile, we consider another stress block that is equivalent to that and is uh, rectangular like this and we consider one according to the experiences of the code we consider one intensity for this stress constant and equals to 0 0.85 prime C. These two areas, the nonlinear one and the equivalent one should be equal. But you see that the center of gravity of this rectangular is at the middle. Center of gravity at the middle. But here, center of gravity is not at the middle, it's upper than the middle, a little. What we do, instead of considering C as height of this profile, we consider another height, which is A. And A is smaller than C. A equals beta 1 times C and beta 1 is a factor less than 1. You will see that is most probably 0.85 or depends on the stress can be lesser even. Finally, we consider this equivalent stress and area instead of the Nonlinear stress that we have actually. And for this one, if you calculate the force which is at the center of that, and we show that by C, compression force, equals the intensity of stress, which is 0 0.85 at prime C, times the height of that, which is A times B, which is the width of the section. Why? Because that profile is only for one line like this. If you want to cover all area, therefore you should multiply by B. Briefly, we consider compression force in compression zone 0 0.85 at prime c times a height times b width of the section and for the tension zone you remember that always we neglect the effect of tension and tensile concrete neglect that and only we consider the effect of the steel bar, which is in tension, which shows by T as a tension force, equals AS, the area of steel, times FY, 
Fy is yield strength of a steel bar. Therefore, we designed actually in design we consider this profile in a set of the real one. Forget this nonlinear, which is real case. This is actual one. We assume one compression stress variation and profile, which is here. Actually, this is equivalent block of stress that we consider according to ACI code in the design. I hope you got the concepts of the design and let's get back to the text. Therefore, according that I showed you, it's assumed for the purpose of this discussion that the curve compression diagram, which was nonlinear, is replaced with a rectangular one with a constant stress intensity of 0.85 prime C. As shown in the figure that I showed you, in the figure, the third one, figure part C. The rectangular diagram of depth A that I showed you, assumed to have the same center of gravity and total magnitude as the curve diagram that we had actually. We assume that alpha or A, the height of the equivalent stress block, is equal beta 1 times C, where beta 1 is a value determined by testing and specified by code. These assumptions will be enable us to easily calculate the theoretical or nominal flexural strength of concrete beam. Therefore, we are uh, searching for the theoretical or nominal strengths of reinforced concrete beam. We say nominal and we show by N, which is equal to the theoretical one without the design considerations. Okay. The students are adding. Now we have 13, 29 students in class. We saw the equivalent block of stress that we assume in the design. We have one T, one C, tension and compression forces. And there is one B minus A over two, which is the lever arm of the moment, the distance between C and also T. In some books, it is written as Z. And Z equals B minus A over two, Y. Because you know that from top, to bottom or to the center or centroid of steel bars, it is D. And D for us is effective depth, depth. Here it's shown D. We have total height or depth, which is H. 
But that thing that come in the calculation actually is not H, is E. And D is from the center of gravity of steel bars up to top of the uh, section or to the extreme fiber of compression concrete. And why D minus A over 2 give us that? Because you know this force C is at the center of applied is applied at the center of gravity of the compression zone. And center of gravity of a rectangular section is at the middle of that. Therefore, from C to the top is A over 2. Because A is total height of this equivalent rectangular stress profile and center of gravity from top is A over 2. Therefore, Z is for rectangular section, don't uh, mix them with the other sections, is D minus A over 2. By multiplying C times Z, we can find M or T times Z. If you get moment about this point that is on the tension zone, it is C times Z. If it's inverse, you get moment at a point on the C, it is T times and Z. Depends, failure is due to the failure of concrete or due to failure or yielding of steel bars. Therefore, these are the concepts of the calculation of ultimate strength design that we use. Now, let's see the steps that we use in calculation of the, uh, the beams with tensile steel and rectangular section. To obtain the nominal or theoretical, theoretical moment strength of a beam, the simple steps to follow are illustrated in the figure that we saw and one example that we see later. But the steps are as follows. One, first we calculate and compute the total tensile force, which was T equals AS times FY. This is the first step. The second step, we uh, equate T to C. What is C? C is total compression force that equals, as we saw in the profile, 0.85 prime C times A times B. Therefore, we equate C to T, which was ASFY. And we solve to find A. Therefore, output is A. In this expression, AB is assumed area stressed in compression of 0.85 prime C. Therefore, the intensity of the equivalent stress below was 0.85 prime C, and the area of the compression zone was AB. Therefore, we're multiplying the intensity, which was 0.85 prime C to AB, we find the compression force C. The 
The compression force C and the tensile force T must be equal to maintain equilibrium at the section. Therefore, when you write summation of Fx at the section is zero, it's clear, C equal T. One is up to the right side, the other is the left side. In the third step, we calculate the distance between the centers of gravities of T and C. As I showed you in the graph, we showed that the Z. That Z that we saw, it is for a rectangular beam. For a rectangular beam cross section, Z equals D minus A over 2. This is Z. At the fourth step, we determine the nominal moment, which is shown by Mn, which equals T or one of them, not both of them, C times Z, times the distance between the center of gravity. Therefore, for us, Mn, In the design, we prefer to be T times Z, not C times Z. But in some case, it can be C times Z. Depends on the condition and which one governs. As I mentioned, in the design, we consider the first one for the design purpose. Why? Because if we, can, and we prefer, if there is failure in the section of beam, it be failure due to a steel, not due to the compression concrete. Why? Because of two reasons. First is for economic reason, that is second. And third one is for safety, second one. Why safety? Because you know that if we have failure due to steel, steel is a ductile material and it goes to the plastification palier and goes to a strain hardening if you consider the stress strain curve of steel. And then we have large deformation but not total collapse. It saves the people that are using on the, the ceiling that we uh, put this beam. But when we have failure due to concrete, the failure of concrete is suddenly and happens um, with large, very, very large deflection and kill everyone that is in the salon. Therefore, we prefer we have one margin for safety. Therefore, we prefer we consider this one in design. The other one is, okay, lesser steel using, not very less, compared to the, for example, needed value is better. Why? Because steel is more expensive than concrete. As I mentioned in the design, we prefer to have this M, N, T times it, due to safety and economic issue. Okay, let's see one example now.
we should determine MN, nominal moment, bending moment, which is called the nominal or theoretical ultimate moment strength of the beam shown in the section. The properties of the material for steel and concrete are given. Fy, which is yield strength of steel, equals 60,000 PSI, pound per square inches. And the prime C, which is the <clears throat> characteristic strength of concrete, it's 3,000 PSI, pound per square inches. In this section, we see the height of the beam is 24 inches. We have three inches as concrete cover. Therefore, the remaining part it is D for us, which is effective depth of beam, which is from the center of gravity of steel to the top extreme fiber of concrete. And there is one width of 14 inches. For design, as I told you, we consider this equivalent stress block on the section. And we assume that up to here, This part of section is under compression. Actually, we have a little more because C is not there. If you remember, neutral axis is lower than that. This is for us neutral axis location. And from neutral axis to the top, if we call that C. And you remember that alpha, the height of the stress block, it was beta one times C. And beta one is a factor less than one. At the center of gravity of the equivalent stress block, we have a force, compression force, which is called by C, compression. At the centroid of the steel, we have another force, which is tension. And the lever arm between C and Z and C and T, which is, is the lever arm of the moment, it is equals to D minus A over 2. Why? Because from the center of the compression is the force up to the top, it is A over 2. And total, you can say effective depth from <coughs> steel centroid up to top, it was D. Therefore, Z equals D minus A over 2. Let's go to the next slide and see the calculations. First, we should compute the tensile and compressive forces, which was shown by T and C. Tension 
force, it was AS times FY. AS is given to us. How? Let's get back to the section. The number of bars and the size of that is given us. We have three number nine. By having this one, we go to the table and we find AS. And in the table, we find that the area is three inches. Therefore, by having AS and FY, which was 60, thousand psi which is equals only 60 ksi what is k k is kips or kilo pounds each thousand pound is one kip or one kilo pound therefore we find here p equals 180 kips or one uh, 180 thousand pounds and we calculate C which is equals to the intensity of stress times A it was the area of the stress times B we apply the values that we have again a prime C3 KSI keeps per square inches times a times b the only unknown here is a therefore we find c in terms of a a remains here in the next step when we equating t and c we can find a the output is a we write T equals C for equilibrium and we equate those values and A remains at output here which is less than D over 2 for example something about 5.04 inches now we calculate Z Z, it was the lever arm of the moment of distance between centroid of gravities of compression and tension zones. Therefore, when we calculate for a rectangular section, it was D minus A over 2, we apply the values D, A, and find Z is equals 18.48 inches now we calculate mm so remember for design we consider mn equals t tension force times z which is the level r Therefore, we can find T we found it was uh, 180 kips and we found Z which was D minus A over 2 and its values was 18.48. We calculate MN. Pay, pay attention that the output is inch kips. Therefore, we convert inch to foot by dividing by twelve. Why? because you know one foot equals 12 inches therefore we found the nominal moment of the section
Excuse me, Professor. Yes. Um, can we uh, please can you go back to the previous? Yes. Uh, can we leave it in in this unit inch per kips? Yes, yes, yes. You can, uh, but you can, but inch kips is a big uh, value, and for practice, is better you use a smaller thing. For example, two hundred. Uh, 77 feet keeps is easier than to say 3326 and yeah. it's more understandable you know for moment oh, okay thank you you're welcome now in next example we see another section when the section is not rectangular. In the previous one, here, you saw that the section is a rectangular section. It's a rectangular section. It's very classic for beam. But if the section is not rectangular, what we should do? you will see that this Z is different, for example. And how we calculate that depends on the form of the section. Now let's go to that example and see what is the example. Before starting an example, I give you some indication and then we start. In the example uh, that we will see, the nominal moment capacity of another beam is determined much as it was in example 2.8. It is different from that. In this example, we see a section which is not a rectangular section. The only difference is that the cross section of the compression area AC stressed at intensity of 0.85 prime C is not rectangular. As a result, once this area is determined, we need to locate the center of gravity of them. Let me show you the, the figure and come back. Imagine that we have a section like this. It's not, you see, it's different from rectangular. Okay, we should uh, examine where is the location of compression zone and what was neutral axis location. Should calculate that. For this one, we divide the section by simpler rectangular forms. One of them is rectangular, that center of gravity is here, the top one. The other one has a center of gravity of here. Excuse me, Professor? Yes. Uh, are we going to be given this, uh, this cross-section area, like area under compression stress? No, no, very good question. You know, depends on the load, depends on the form of section and the values of steel bars. The center of gravity may be at location one that I show you here, at the top one, or may be at location two, under the top rectangular. Again, we should assume and verify that. In this example, it's assumed that this compression zone is somehow, we have neutral axis at the web, not at the top one. But we should verify and find, for example, the value of A here, which is from top to this assumed level and 
check that. Is it correct or not? In this exam, you will see that the A with this assumption is 9.23. It's greater than this height, which is 6 inches or the top rectangular. Therefore, the assumption was correct. But if A was less than 6 inches, it means that the location that we assumed for neutral axis and for the compression stress, it was wrong. And we should start again to examine the location of neutral axis and compression zone when we have the uh, situation that I showed you in number one, the location one, and calculate this one. Therefore, it's a matter of try and error. We should assume and we should verify that. In this exam, it's assumed that the location of neutral axis and also the compression zone, it is in the, for example, uh, second, rectangular or bottom rectangular very good question no it's not given therefore it's assumed and should be verified okay thank you very much you're welcome therefore here as i told you we divide this one by two rectangular by assumption that the compression zone is in two areas for top one you know that we can calculate for top one if it is we call that a1 area one We have from the center of gravity of this simple rectangle is Y1. Second one, let me show you with another color. Second one has an area of A2, which is, is A2, and A2 has a center of gravity at the middle of that, and this distance from center of gravity up the top, it is Y2. You use the equation that you have from statics, y bar equals summation of a i, i can be one, two, three, depends how many rectangular you have, times y i over summation of a i okay for our case let me again change the color For case if the y bar is one location here, the combination of those two y, if this is the y bar for us, y bar for this case, because we have just only Two rectangle, it is a one 
times y1 plus a2 times y2 over a1 plus a2. And we calculate the location of y bar from here to top, which is given to us. Therefore, this is the method that we use for finding the location of centroid of the combination of two rectangles that we have, or the zone that is under compression. Let me compare this section with the rectangular section that we saw in the previous example. There are two differences. First, there we calculated A, as you remember, from equating T equals C. But here we don't calculate A, we calculate AC, which is area under compression, totally. And you know, this we calculate Y bar, which is from the center of gravity of the zone, which is under compression to top. And for us, this other difference is Z. You remember Z, it was D minus A over two for rectangular section, but for non-rectangular section, it is D minus Y bar. These are things that we should take into account. And when we designed, we calculated A, it was found 9.23 is greater than 6. It shows that considering the location of compression zone here, it was correct. Otherwise, we should start and consider the location to access here and then calculate again. Now we saw the concept. Let's get back to the solution of the example. Okay, first we calculate T. T is tension force. Equals AS times FI. AS is given in this section, in this example. FI is given 60 kips per square inches. And we find T in terms of kips. Then we calculate C. I am repeating again. C, when the section is not rectangular, is not 0.85 times A times B. Is 0.85 times AC. Just AC. What is AC? AC is the area of concrete that is under the stress of 0.85 prime C. According to the equivalent stress block given or designed by the code of ACI. Therefore, here we find C in terms of AC. By equating T and C, we find AC. Output is AC, area under compression. Okay, when you equate that, T equals AC times this value. Therefore, AC we can find from here by applying the value of T and F prime C. We find AC something about 94 square inches. Keep in mind this value, let's go to the 
section now. Okay, you remember that we calculated AC is something about 94 something. That's quite interesting. We compare that area with the area that we have for the first top rectangular wall with this area. If we can put this area, this area is six inches by six inches. Therefore, if I call this one A1, A1 is 36 square inches. Okay, why we calculate that? We wanted to compare now AC with A1. You see that AC, which is 94, is greater than A1. What does it mean? It means that the location of the bottom of the compression zone or the location of neutral axis that we consider it's in the bigger rectangular, it was correct. The assumption was correct. Therefore, we can continue based in this assumption. It's verified. If it was less than, AC was less than 36, we cannot continue. We should assume another meter axis in the smaller rectangle and repeat the calculations. Therefore, by calculating AC and comparing with A1, we verified the assumption that we made before, that the location of neutral axis is at the bigger rectangle that is shown at the bottom of the figure. Okay, let's get back to the solution. We found a C is greater than a one. Therefore, our assumption was correct. The top 94.2 square inches of the beam shown in the figure is stressed in compression in a intensity of 0.85 prime C. The area can be shown to extend 9.23. How? Down from the top of the beam. What does it mean? Let me show you. We calculated AC was something about 94. 94 something minus 36 that we have here, the remaining is 52, 58.12 inches. This remaining area is the area of actually this triangle that's shown here. Okay, we have the area and we have the width of this one. By dividing the area to the width, we can find this distance, the height of this compression zone. Therefore, by dividing that area 
over the width, we found the height of compression zone in the second uh, rectangle that we have here. Now, by adding these three 0.23 inches to this 6 inches, we can find A, which is from here to here. Here we find A equals 99.23 inches. Here we saw how we calculate A. First, we subtract AC from 36. We found the remain, remained area. Dividing by D, we found the height of this area, the second one. And adding by 6, we found the value of A. Okay, let's get back to the solution again and see. Yes, therefore we found 9.23, which was A for us. Now we should calculate Y bar, the center of gravity of the compression zone from top. How we calculate that I showed you? For calculation of this center of gravity from here to top, we divided the section into simple rectangles a1 y1 a2 y2 we applied the formula and we found y y bar for total area that is under compression Therefore, as you see, this is, for example, A1 times Y1 plus A2, the remaining area, times uh, Y2. Y2, it was one six and half of the other one. Let me show you. From here, the center of gravity of the second one, it is half of this 3.2 plus 6 inches. We have from the center of gravity of the second rectangle up to top. This is Y2. And from center of the first one to top it was Y1 that it is half of the 6 inches. Therefore, you see that A1 times Y1 plus A2 times Y2 over A1 plus A2 or simply AC. Plus AC equals A1 plus A2. And from here, we find Y bar. 
pay attention why bar should not bigger than for example d or d over 2 should not negative you should not calculation pay attention should be correct and after that we calculate z z equals d minus y bar let me show you on the figure let me erase all ink on the slide yeah <coughs> If this is the center of gravity of location of center of gravity of compression zone, which was Y bar from top, from center of gravity of steel up to top was D. And from center of gravity of compression concrete to the center of gravity of tensile steel, which is Z, equals D minus A Y bar. Pay attention. This is Z for us. Actually, Z is the location of the compression force C that we had here to the location of tension force, which was T. And from here, from C to Z is Z to uh, C to T is Z, which was equal to D minus Y bar. Okay, let's go to the continuation of the example. Solution of that. We calculated Z equals D minus Y bar. D was 21 inches minus 5.85 inches equals 15.15 .15 inches. And now we calculate MN. You remember that MN was or is equal T times Z. And we can say T, which was equal 240 kips, we calculated at the first step, times Z, which was 15.15. This is Z. Therefore, we find MN values in inch kips because the input was inch and kips. As I mentioned, we convert that to foot keeps by dividing by 12. Why 12? Because one foot equals 12 inches. Therefore, we found nominal moment for this example as well. Therefore, you saw that how we design the sections of the beams when 
their section is rectangular or it is non-rectangular. Doesn't matter which shape it has, we use the same criteria and same procedure. We divide the section by some simple rectangular section, we calculate Y bar and we calculate MN. This part, the section was given to you, it was not designed. Now we should see the design, how we can design that. In next chapter, which is chapter 3, we see the strength analysis of beam according to the ACI code, American Concrete Institute code. Now let's see a little about the design method histories and the procedures, etc. I remember when I was a student like you, don't say how many years ago, perhaps more than 43 years ago, or more than that, 45 years ago even. Yeah, 45 years ago, I remember that time they used WSC method, working assess design, but they started to shift to the USD method, ultimate strength design. But now, actually everyone uses USD method, ultimate strength design. WSD method is an old fashioned, old version of the calculation, but it still is valid. In the ACI code, it's written, you can use USD method, you, you can use LRFD, a new one, and, and another one, or as an alternative, you can use WSD method. Therefore, let's see what are those. From the early 19th, 1900s or the 19th century until the early 1960, Nearly all reinforced concrete design in the United States was performed by working stress design, which is called alloy stress design as well. Therefore, the old one was the name was working stress design. This is the name of method which is also called allowable stress design. Or is kind straight line design. Why a straight line? A straight line in the stress profile. <clears throat> in this method, which is frequently referred as WST method, W for working, and S for stress, S in stress, and D for design. It is WST method. The depth and live loads to be supported called working load or service loads. We directly use dead load and live load, which is called working load or service load. We don't use any safety factor to that or increasing factor. We use directly the values of dead load and live load. The load is given. The members of the structure were proportional so to the stress calculated by transformed area did not exist the permissible or allowable stress. And when we calculate the stresses in the section, that is, you remember that, for example, if this neutral axis. In transform area, you saw that the stress was linear, something like this. We calculate here FC and here FS. FS and FC, as we saw in the transform area method, 
should not exceed the permissible or allowable stress. You remember that we used allowable stress for concrete, it was 0 0.45 a prime C. And for steel, we use 0 0.55. Fy. What was Fy? Fy was the yield strength of steel. So up to here we saw the WST method. After 1963, in USA, in the other countries, they started later than that. After 1963, the ultimate strength design method rapidly gained popularity because the following reasons. One, it makes use of more rational approach than does WST method. Second one reason, it uses a more realistic consideration of safety. The third reason, it provides more economical design. It means WST is a little over design. But USD give us economical design section. With this method, now called a strength design, I told you it is called WST or just ST. The working depth and live loads are multiplied by certain load factors, equivalent to safety factors. In the first one, we didn't increase the load. We increased the annual stress, or in, we, can, uh, we give the safety factor comparing the actual stress and annual stress, or giving a uh, safety factor to stress. In the second one, we consider stress as the real ones, but we apply a load factor which we increase the load. For example, if the real one is 100, I don't know, kilogram force per square meter or I don't know, foot per a square meter, we multiply 1.2, 1.6. In the design, we consider more loads. It means we apply safety factor. This is the method we use. But we use the real value of stress. Therefore, the first one was WST method. The second one is U ST method. Ultimate strength design. But for first one, it was working stress not a strength, a stress design. But as I mentioned, now today this method is more used from the first one. First one is good for design very complicated sections or design the water tanks. Why water tanks, if it is reinforced concrete structure, you should not have a leakage of water from the cracks inside the body of the structure and goes to the reinforcement and make corrosion on that and the reinforcement when crude it, they have the 
bigger capacity. It has a big pressure on the concrete cover and destroy the concrete cover. Okay. Even though almost all of the reinforced concrete structures, the reader will encounter will be designed by a strength design method. It's still useful to familiar, get familiar with the USC, WSC method. Why we need the WSC method, the old method, the old version, working as a design for the <coughs> following reasons. First, some designers use WSC method for proportionating fluid containing structures, as I mentioned, like water tanks. Such as water tanks and various sanitary structures. For sanitary structures, you will use that one as well. When these structures are designed by WSD, stresses are kept at fairly low level. Therefore, low level stress, bigger size, less crack. With the result, there is capacity less cracking and less conse consequent leakage of water to the <coughs> structure. If the designer uses a strength design or UST method design and makes use of proper crack control methods as described in chapter six, there should be few leakage problems. I remember when I was young engineers, in the same age of you, I don't 23 years old, I 22 years old. I was working in a company that they had some uh, for example, water tanks, uh, treatment plant, and sewage treatment plant, and then um, we had two or three companies working. One of them works on the working stress design. I had no problem with that. The other came with USD. Oh, I didn't like that because I was control of that project. I asked them <coughs> to check the <coughs> width of crack and then be sure that we don't have a lot, uh, lot of leakage and problem. They did that, but at the end they were not satisfied, we were not satisfied, they converted the calculation to the WST method, the old version. Bigger size, less crack, less leakage of water inside, less corrosion, safety, because doesn't change too much the economy of the project. But imagine that for long time operation, I don't know, 25 years, 30, 50 years, you should use the structure in the safe position and then safe status. This is better We use for water tanks. That will use the Sorry. Therefore, don't forget when you design water tanks or various sanitary structures, use WSD method is safer. Otherwise, you should control the crack. If the designer uses USD method or strength design, you should control the crack. If you use US method. Second reason, the ACI method for calculating the moment of inertia <clears throat> to be used for deflection calculation requires some knowledge of working stress position. <laughs> Even if you use the USD method 
for calculation of calculation of deflection you need some knowledge of working stress design procedure WDS method design <clears throat> the third reason the design of pre-stress concrete members is based not only on the strength method but also on elastic stress calculation at service load conditions for long spans we need to use pre-stressed concrete members for example if you have beam the span length of beam is more than 7.5 meters 8 meters the normal concrete beam that we designed here is not enough you should apply pre-stress concrete members and pre-stress concrete design you say how i say you don't know because pre-stress concrete design is a course with three credits like the course that we have today you should study that during one semester 15 lectures and understand how to design pre-stress concrete therefore in pre-stress concrete we need the service load and the, in addition to the UST method we need those condition of the working stress design Therefore, we should realize that the working stress design WSC method has several disadvantages as well. When today's design method was called ultimate strain design WSC method for several decades, but as mentioned, the code now uses the strain design. So you say, okay, what can I do? I say, if you don't have fluid containing structure like water tanks, value sanitary, or pre-stress, you can forget WSD and use only UST method. What is UST? ultimate strength design that most of the structure are designed by that now if we design the beam according to UST method which UST method is based on the nonlinear behavior of material concrete. See, the stress is nonlinear here. And the tension is neglected. Tension stress is neglected. Or this behavior, we should see how we design and use UST method. Therefore, this is for ultimate load condition. If it was in WST method, we had the linear form of stress. Let's first see the safety. What is the structural safety? The structural safety of a reinforced concrete structure can be calculated with two, with two methods. The first method involves calculation of stress used that we use in the WST method by the working or service loads and their comparison with certain allowable stress. 
Therefore, this, the first one was the base of W estimator. Working stress design. But the second one, which is the uh, base for U estimator, ultimate strength design. We use the load factors. The second approach to structural safety is the one used in a strength design or USD. A strength design is the simplified name for ultimate strength design, in which the uncertainty is considered. The working loads are multiplied by certain load factors that are greater than one. The resulting larger or factor loads are used for design of a structure. Imagine that for in this method, which is for WST method, the UST method, We use load factors. This load factor for death load, for example, is 1.2, bigger than 1. We increase the load in design. The real load is 1, but we consider 1.2. For live load, because we have more uncertainty, we consider 1.6. Actually, for live load, we consider more safety factor, because it's unknown for us. But dead load is known during the life of the building doesn't change, like the weight of beams, slabs, columns, and then, I don't know, finishing, tiles, etc. They are fixed. But live load changes. The amount changes, the location changes. It's not very clear for us. The duration of loading are different. We consider more safety factor. We increase that more than dead load, which is for us clear. Now, in addition to load factor, which is somehow safety factor for us, we consider another factor, which is called the strength reduction factor phi. When we calculate the nominal moment or theoretical moment, we multiply that by a reduction factor phi less than one, and consider that one as design, ultimate design moment. It means another safety factor. For example, phi, if it's 0, 9, 10%, we uh, <clears throat> consider the design section compared to the real one. It means inverse of that something, 10% more safety factor. Therefore, we have two types of safety factor in USD method. One of them is applying the load factor, increasing synthetically the load factor. The second one is reducing the calculated moment. We say the capacity of the section is 100. Let's consider it's 90. We 
for example, downgrade the section that we have why it's giving another safety factor. Therefore, these are the methods that we use in WSD and USD method. Therefore, to accurately estimate the ultimate strength of a structure, it's necessary to take into account the uncertainty in material strengths, dimensions, and workmanship. Because, you know, we have some uncertainty. You know, the execution is not ideal. The material has some problem, even the stick. When you test that, you see sometimes it's not FI, it's not real FI, it's less than that. The actual FI is uh, less than the design FI, for example. For these reasons, we consider one safety factor more than load factors. This is and reduction factors. This is done by multiplying the theoretical ultimate strengths, which is called nominal strengths of each member by the strength reduction factor phi. We consider this one to the calculated moment, nominal moment. Which is less than one. These values generally vary between zero and nine for bending to zero sixty five for some columns, which is in they are under compression. Therefore, we write MU the ultimate design moment equals phi, which is reduction factor, the strength reduction factor times MN. MN was nominal uh, bending moment times phi, for example, 0, 9 give us lesser value for MU. In design, we consider lesser value. It means it considers safety factor for the design. As we saw in the section, the stress in WST is not linear, nonlinear, but always we consider a strain is linear. Strain is a line, is linear. But a stress in ultimate strain design is nonlinear. If the concrete is assumed to crash at the strain of 0.003, in ultimate strengths, because we don't consider the alloy stress, but we consider one limit for a strain, that is 0.03. We call that epsilon u which is ultimate strength, ultimate strain for concrete, which is a little conservative for most concretes and still to yield at FY. But we consider for a steel a stress reaches to FY, not 55 FY. In concrete, we use a strain limited to 0 
0.03, but in the steel, we use a stress equals Fy, the yield strength. It's possible to make a reasonable derivation of beam formulas without knowing the exact stress distribution. However, it's necessary to know the value of total compression force and its centroid. Let's see next slide. Here, as we saw before, you see A, the section of the beam, B, the stress profile and forces in tension steel. And you see that it's nonlinear. The stress is nonlinear. And how we calculate this area? We should use integral, but it is not mathematic course, it is design course. Okay, we use one equivalent. Stress below, which is rectangular with a intensity of 0.85 times C and height of A, which is beta 1 times A uh, times C. C was the location of distance from the location to access to extreme fiber of the section. <coughs> we use this one. And what is the value of beta 1? Beta 1 is 0 0.85 or less. Let's see how we define that. Therefore, <clears throat> in design we use, as I mentioned, an equivalent rectangular block of stress with intensity of zero eighty five prime C and A equals not alpha A equals beta one times C. According to the test, they found that ACI give us this value for a prime C of 4000 PSI or less. We use a fixed value for beta 1, which this value is 0.85. And for us, beta 1 is 0.85. When we have a prime C equal to 4,000 PSI or lesser than this value. Clear. When we have a prime C more greater than 4,000, we have less value for beta 1. And beta 1 can be determined from the following formula. Beta 1 equals actually this is interpolation between 0 0.85 4000 for a prime C equals 4000 and the other values. We apply the values of prime C here minus 4000 psi over 1000 times. 0.05% and we have this one. It means that for reduction of for increasing of the prime C for each 1000 we have reduction of 0.85.
But please pay attention. Never a beta 1 should be less than 0 0.65. For example, you calculated you write 262. No, 62, no. Should not be less than 65. Therefore, you consider 0 0.65. Therefore, for beta 1 is clear. Either we have condition 1 here, which is a prime C equals 4,000 PSI or less, which is give us beta 1, 0, 0.85. Or for the second case, when a prime C is greater than 4,000 PSI, then we use this formula with limitation that should not be less than 0.65. Finally, we should calculate MU. How In the section that we designed, phi times mn, this is the capacity of design, design capacity of the section should be more than the applied ultimate moment. Or in design, we say these are equal, should be equal. In design, we consider equal. So mu equals phi times mn. I mentioned mn was nominal or theoretical moment of the section, resisting moment of section, and phi was strength reduction factor, which was 0, 0.9 or less. You should calculate that. You don't say that always should be phi 0, 0.9, no. We calculate strain at the steel bar. We compare that one with zero, 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 five. If strain at the steel is greater than this one, that's okay. That times phi is zero nine. But if not, we should calculate. And later you will see we have one graph for that. For less stresses, for more stresses, and for, we have some curve like this. And we calculate phi from here. Depends what is the value of Epsilon T. When it's greater than zero zero point five, the value T phi is zero When is less than zero zero two five zero zero two here for example is zero sixty five and here it is interpolation between zero nine and zero five. We see this uh, graph later. Here you see again the beam under ultimate conditions. And the calculation, I think now we stop here because the time's up. And I am thanking you, you didn't go to the break. 
non-continuous view where that lecture. Therefore, I stop here. And next lecture, we see what are the formulas for design. And we apply them and see some examples. If you don't have any question, let me stop recording here. And if you have some more, uh, for example, questions about other things about the course, I am at your service and let me answer you. Thank you very much. Let me see, we have some, uh, for example, chatting or not. Thank you for your kind attention. Muhammad, thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. I thank you. And Mazin, thank you, Prof. You are welcome, most welcome. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and you can by rewatching uh, re the videos that I put here, the recording one, you can follow. And uh, even I upload the for example, files, lecture notes, everything. We have different types of the lecture notes. Full reference book, simplified or summary of the reference book that I have, uh, provide for you, provided for you, and also the lecture note of each lecture we have here. Okay, thank you very much. Therefore, I thank you all, and I am stopping recording here. And if you have any question, let me know. Thank you very much again. I am stopping the recording.